I'm going to give you a tip on how you can write less code in your web APIs. Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jono, and today I'm going to be showing you how we can write less code using the exception handling middleware in .NET Core Web APIs. Now, before we start the video, I just want to say a quick thank you for getting me to a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to continue supporting the channel, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Let's get into it. So I'm in my basic controller here, and we just have a couple of actions where we add to do and we can delete a to do. And these are just pretty simple. We just call a to do service and we just do add, and we call to do service and we just do delete. This is what I want to start talking to you about in terms of where we can actually start making improvements here. So if we have a look at these actions, we can see they're both wrapped in a try catch where we log the exception when an exception occurs and then we just return a 500 server error, something went wrong. If we look at this in this example, if we wanted to change how we log these messages or we wanted to add something new, let's say I wanted to, to, to start sending emails when an exception occurs. So I can start going I notification service and inject a, uh, a notification service here. And I can do just await notification service dot send and send the exception. So in this example, it's not too bad because we can just copy and paste this code. There's only two, there's only two examples here, or there's only two actions here, and it's not, it's not that much overhead. But when we start dealing with a larger system where we might have hundreds of different endpoints, um, all doing different things, but we all want to when we want to handle the exceptions um, in a similar way This is where this can start getting a bit hairy because we're we're repeating ourselves, And we have to do a lot of copy paste and if there's a bug in this code here that we've copied across all these different actions We then have to go and change it in hundreds of different locations for example So this is where we can actually start using exception handling middleware in order to to take this code or to write this code once and have it execute once and then we only have to change one location when we want to add new features or change how it's working. So in our startup class in our configure method we actually have the ability to set up an exception handler that will handle all exceptions globally for us and that's actually used by uh, this application builder. It has an extension method called app.useExceptionHandler. So this is exception handler. If we read the description, it's going to add a middleware to the pipeline that will catch the exceptions, log them, and re-execute the request in an alternate pipeline. So we're actually gonna be using an arrow function here. So if we do app arrow function, and this is going to be an iApplication builder, and then we're going to be doing app.run, and this is going to take in a context. And I'm going to make this an async function. And this is where we can actually start doing our logic. So this one here, um, handle exceptions here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna write a message to our HTTP response. So I can do that by doing await context dot response dot write as JSON async. And we're going to be using ASP.NET Core HTTP. And I can just create an object here, uh, maybe error. And this can just be, sorry, something went wrong. So what this code is going to do is it's going to log our exceptions for us when they get thrown and then it's going to write a response just saying sorry something went wrong. So if we go back to our controller what this is going to allow us to do is essentially get rid of all of these try catches here. So as you can see these four or five lines have significantly decreased the size of our controller and you could imagine if we had multiple controllers with hundreds of endpoints, this would save a lot of lines of code and it would make it as well. So it'd be a lot, a lot less likely for bugs to be introduced because we're not duplicating code. And if we do find a bug, we only have to change it in one place. So one thing I forgot to mention was this can actually cause a bit of problems. This will actually override what we've done here. Since we're just going to be testing this, I'm just going to be removing this developer exception page. So we have this here. So let's just throw an exception. Uh, so we can actually see it working. So throw an exception and I'm just gonna say this is a test. So if we run this now, we should be able to see that our exceptions are going to be logged uh, when we execute the endpoints. So we can see here that we're getting a, this is a test, so it's logging it for us. Um, and then if we look at our response, we have error, something went wrong. So it's, it's doing what we expect, which is great. Okay, so what happens when we actually wanna start interacting with our exception? and we need access to our exception. So we actually have a line of code here that we can use to actually get our exception. And it's going to be this one here. So we can access our HTTP context, our features, and then we can get our iExceptionHandler path feature. 
So I'm just going to resolve this. And now if I just put a breakpoint here and I run that again, we should see that we have access to our exception and it's gonna say this is a test. Okay, so we've hit our breakpoint and if I just step over this, we see we have our exception, this is a test, all great. And in our controllers, we were actually using a I notification service as well to actually start sending notifications. So how can I inject or how can I get access to services inside of this, uh, this handler to actually do other things with my exception. So it actually gives us a really simple and easy way to do it. So I can do var notification service and in our HTTP context, we actually have access to request services. Then I can do my get required service and I can get my notification service all fine. This context and request services gives us access to all of our services that we've configured inside of our application. So now all I need to do is just do await notification service dot send and I can send our exception. So if we run this now, we should see in our in our logs that we have a notification sent. Here we go. So we have our exception being logged, that's great. And then we also have our sending notification and notification sent. So we know that that's working now. I hope this short video has showed you how we can use the exception middleware in order to clean up our code and have our exception handling in one central location, giving us a more maintainable solution because it's in one central location and we don't have to go through and copy and paste code in order to get the functionality across multiple endpoints. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe. And as always, all the code for this video will be in my GitHub repository, link in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed. See ya.